Hey, and welcome to the first lesson of C++ in 2021. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our project. And my goal is to present to you how to use C++ modules. And we're going to be using module throughout this entire course, as that is what is suggested in the professional C++ book that I am going to be following. And also because it's new and it it's exciting. C++ finally has modules. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do with them. So the problem that we have with modules right now is that they're not supported in many tool chains yet. Uh, in fact, I haven't been able to get it working with CMake, which I don't think it's, uh, working yet. And, um, yeah, I, I personally only like CMake, but all of the build tools, they're not really supporting modules yet. Now I have seen um, reference that this build two tool chain uh, has uh, support for modules, but I don't know it yet. So maybe I'll, I'll this will be a lesson in itself. Um, but for the time being, we are going to stick to Windows as that's what most of you are going to be running anyways. And we are going to be using Visual Studio Preview. Now I tried to get it set up in the non-preview version and it seemed like it wasn't quite ready yet so as of today which is may 16th 2021 um we are going to be using visual studio preview when it gets uh the point upgrade when it all gets released to the stable um i will try to let you guys know let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is first download the preview so you can just google visual studio preview and download the community edition. When you have the Visual Studio Community Edition installed or downloaded, you're going to get a, a page like this during install if you have nothing installed yet. Uh, what I, I set up is desktop development with C++ and game development with C++ and Linux development with C++. Um, I think you probably only need this first one, but um, if you want to be able to do anything, um, if you're on my channel, there are high probabilities that you are also a game developer. Um, most C++ developers are game developers too. So, um, I would install those three and yeah, so install those. It'll take a while. It's something like seven gigabytes or something like that. Install it. It'll ask you to restart your computer. And with your computer restarted, um, we can get into visual studio. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. We're going to create an empty project, which is in the windows console. Um, we don't want to make a CMake project yet because, um, CMake doesn't support modules yet as far as I can tell. So anyways, hit next on empty project. We're going to call this CPP in 2021 and then we're going to hit create. Hey, so future Paul here, I forgot a step. So I am recording this in the future. So before you, we create any of our files, what you're going to do is you're going to right click your project in the solution explorer here, right click, hit properties. Then in configuration properties, general, making sure that all configurations is select selected up here in C++ language standard, make sure you have it set to ISO C++ 20. Um, it will default to 14, I believe, uh, just make sure it's 20. Um, and with that, I return you to the originally recorded video. And here's a preview of what you're going to have by the end of this video. See ya. Okay. With your project created, what we're going to do is we are going to create a main function as an entry point into the application. And we will create a simple module to show you how encapsulation works in visual studio to start off. What you're going to do is get new item. And traditionally you would create a main CPP file, but if we want to use modules, you will want to do a main.cppm file. Now any um, CPP files that will be using uh, importing modules but have global scope, as in the, its code not contained within a module, I would keep within the cppm files. Um, that will give you access to the import keyword. So for example, input IO stream and unlike includes, um, you need the semicolon. And then you will need an int main as our entry point and we'll return zero explicitly. 
Now you might get squiggles um, in places where you don't expect squiggles. That's because this is a preview version and everything is still relatively um, new and IntelliSense is slow. So um, let's just print our generic hello world. Hello world. There we go. So with that, we should be able to play and we get hello world. Now let's say um, for whatever reason, we want a module. We need a module to tell us hello world. So we will create our module. Uh, we'll, again, you know, right click, click add, new item, and the new entry in the list, C++ module interface unit. Now uh, Visual Studio likes the .ixx um, extension. I personally don't, but um, you could also create a CPPM, um, which is, uh, actually what I'm going to do. Actually, no, we'll keep it separate because so the convention I'm going to use is modules will be contained in these .ixx files. Any global scope CPP files, uh, like traditional CPP files, will be in uh, .cppm files. Now, we may get to a point where everything we're building is just a .ixx file and main.cppm is the only thing referencing them. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, We'll work our way through the, the book and see where it goes. So we're going to create a hello world module. This is our hello world module and it has a function that we will call hello world. And we will go over the syntax. Now we're going to define this function um, and then we'll go over the syntax afterwards. So we no longer need import IO stream inside here. We'll put that inside the module and this std count we'll put inside here. All right, so we have a module. So let's go over the anatomy of a module. The first thing you will want in a module um, is the export module keywords and the module name. Now, I believe you can also have periods here. You can do this, I believe is perfectly valid. Well, we're going to stick to simple names because we're cool like that. Second thing you're probably going to want is your imports. Now, traditionally in C++, you're going to be looking at the include IO stream um, functions. Now, if we save that, you're going to see that uh, if we build that, I believe it's going to tell us uh, include IO there. Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. I get it. Include IO stream in the purview of module. Hello world appears erroneous. Consider moving that directive before the module declaration or replace, it, replace the textual inclusion with import IO stream. So when you want to access standard library um, stuff, use the import keyword instead of the include keyword and put the semicolon at the end. Next thing we're going to, we're going to have is hello world. And we're going to just uh, add a we're going to add a comment saying that this is public. Now, if we want something private, let's say we don't want other people to know our implementation. So let's do void. Uh, so that we'll put private and this will be void. Hello world impl, right? And then we can do this and call hello world impl here. Now, I believe this is going to yell at me saying that it's not identifier not found. That's because what we want to do is again, usually you want to have your interfaces here. So this is generally what you're going to do is um, you'll have. So let's say you have hello world here, hello world in portal. So you can have again, private public and then private and then you're going to be able to actually make your definitions here and this will front here so you'll let's um, do this here Add another thing here and this will be interfaces and implementation now, at first glance, I, I think this is the way I'm going to want to do it. So we'll, we'll stick to that. So you've got 
your your declarations at the top and then you're going to have your implementation implementations anything with the export keyword on the interface will be exported outside of the module anything without the export keyword when it's declared does not have the export it does not have will not be accessible outside of the module um, when you make your implementation functions you don't need um, the export keyword so if we go into our main.cpp and let's import our hello world module now you're going to notice something in our hello world module when we included a standard library function we included the angle brackets when you're importing a custom module you will not use the angle brackets you will just import with the name so here you're going to have access to the hello world function now if we build that it's going to print hello world like normal. Now you'll see that IntelliSense was wrong. It shows the hello world impl function here, but if we actually try to build that, hello world impl, impl identifier not found. Now this is an IntelliSense problem and it's not necessarily, uh, it's not a coding problem. This is intended because we did not use the export keyword. So um, eventually I'm sure, um, IntelliSense will not um, will not display this, but it does, so we're stuck with it for now. So now, notice here, now we've got our hello world impl, so we can replace the implementation of this file any way, any way we want. So this is how you would de create generic interfaces. You would create your interface and then um, have your implementations under, underneath. So that's the basics of modules. Um, CPPM file extension will be used for uh, global scope code like int main and other functionality like that. IXX will be used for modules. You're going to have your imports. Uh, let's just import up here. You're going to have your interfaces and then you're going to have your hello world. Now, um, to get a little bit more uh, granular, Let's say you, you can do this, you can use the export keyword on anything you want. So you can export a struct. And again, we're, we're going to, we're gonna, going to go over what uh, each of these are uh, more detail um, in further uh, lessons, but you can export a struct. Let's move this up because this is public. You can export a, a class. You can also export entire namespaces. So, so let's say you have namespace. Uh, we'll call this namespace hello world. Hello world namespace. Within this namespace, let's say you have void in it and void uh, shutdown. Keep it simple. Uh, and we'll give basic uh, implementations for this. Now, uh, hello world struct, we're going to put um, here, we're going to go int, int world num, and then we, here we'll also do the same thing, world num. All right. So all of these will be accessible within our main.cpp. So uh, let's call this hello world struct for one. So we can do hello world struct my struct one. We can also do hello world class my class one. Now we're not going to use these. We're, I'm just showing you that they work. What else did we have in here? Uh, and we had the namespace. So let's uh, let's quickly just implement some functionality in here. Now you don't need to separate the functionality from the declaration as I showed you before. So we are just going to put this in, and we will call shutdown, and we will call in it here. go 
And now to access the namespace, so we would access it, hello world namespace, double colon, init. And same thing for shutdown. Now we are going to put a breakpoint here just so we can uh, look through everything. So you'll see here that my struct has one, my class has two. And if we continue this and look at the output, hello world init shutdown. Everything worked as intended. So anything that you put export on, everything within it will be exported. Now let's say you have a namespace like this one, but you don't want to export everything. Let's say you're, uh, you want to have a public init and shut down function, but you want a private, let's say, update function. There we go, and we will call update. And again, um, here and we're going to, you're going to see that update is not accessible here. So now we'll go here. Hello world namespace. Again, you see IntelliSense, IntelliSense shows it, but if we try to build, update is not a member of hello world namespace. So again, um, anything that doesn't have the export keyword is not accessible outside of the module itself. Now, if we want to actually call update, it is available internally. So actually, well, let's not go here. Let's go into hello world and we'll go hello world namespace update, right? I believe that's, that's that should work. Uh, oops, and we remove it from here. Remove this breakpoint, build it. Everything builds fine. Now you see, hello world, update init shutdown, which is exactly what we were expecting. Hello world, update, and then init shutdown. And that is the basics of C++ 20 modules in Visual Studio. In the future, when other tool sets are supporting modules, specifically CMake, I am looking forward to CMake support. Um, I will put out a course on using CMake and we'll likely switch over to CMake and um, move away from Visual Studio because I don't really like Visual Studio that much. But for now, this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using Visual Studio throughout the, this course. So that's it for this lesson. Um, if you're interested in more, leave a like, subscribe, all of that nonsense. And if you are looking to know what we are going to look at next, let me flip through the magic book. We are going to be doing a crash course in basic C++ stuff. So we're going to go over stuff like um, preprocessor directives, which we probably won't have that much stuff that we need to do. Um, IO streams, namespaces, which we've already touched on a little bit, um, literals and uh, variables and structs and classes and vectors and some standard library stuff. It'll be fun. So uh, look forward to that. That's it for me today. Have a good one.